Hello friends, if you love furniture flips, today I have some of my favorite furniture transformations. Welcome back, my name is Sonia and welcome to Domestic Diva DIY, where I share DIY home decor on a budget. If that is something that you uh, enjoy, make sure you press that subscribe button and a notification bell so you get notified when new videos drop and become part of my YouTube family. One of the ways I furnish my home is with thrifted furniture that I have transformed into pieces that fit my home and style. Not only is this budget friendly, but it also helps furniture keep, keeps furniture going into the garbage and keeps our landfills clean. I'm going to share with you a wide variety of pieces I have transformed over the years using several different, different techniques. So let's not waste any more time and let's get right into it. Today I am upcycling this beautiful piece that I picked up off of Facebook Marketplace. I got it for $50. There are a few things that need to be fixed up. I like the top is a little bit loose and then one of the drawer, it, drawers is a little bit, um, one of the doors is a little bit loose so it just needs to be tightened and the top needs to be glued. But um, let me show you some of the supplies that I will be using for the uh, for upcycling. So I will be pay painting the whole piece with any Sloan in Athenian black, which is a real black black color. And I'm going to put a clear gloss uh, lacquer on it, which is also by Annie Sloan. For the hardware, I will be trying the gilding wax from Annie Sloan. I have never used this before, so it will be a learn with me type of video um, and see how it, like I watched tutorials and I've talked to um, the lady that sold me this and it should be fairly easy. It is the last thing that you do put on, whether it's on furniture or anything, but it is the very last thing you put on. And then some of the other items that I'll need is my favorite um, chalk paint brush and then uh, just a foam brush for the lac lacquer, some sand and sanding block, some rags for cleanup, and then some screwdrivers for the hardware. You will also need some wood glue and a brush for the gilding wax. So let's get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the top that's loose and um, I'm going to clean it first just on top and then glue it so that way they can that can set while I work on the rest of the piece with cleaning and fixing it up. And because there's no visible uh, spots on it for um, to clean off, I'm just using uh, wet rag and I just wetted it with water. I would also like to mention that this video is a part of a open collaboration that I am hosting, co-hosting with Julia from The Mug Life DIY and uh, there will be a playlist in my description box that you can head on over after you are finished watching my video and check out everybody else that is participating in this collaboration. Uh, yeah, I will also have Julia's channel linked down below so you can go ahead and check her out as well. I want this area to be completely dry before I put the wood glue on. Using some clamps to clamp it up or uh, over there just so it holds it in place. So 
So I am using a sander just to sand a couple areas down. You don't have to do this. I always like to do it just in case if there's stuff that needs to be, uh, you need to um, smooth out or uh, any sticky stuff that I might have missed from the, uh, from just wiping it down. Once you're finished sanding, you want to wipe all the dust residue off so there is nothing left. So I think I'm ready to, to take the hardware off and start painting the drawers and the sides, uh, but the top still needs a little bit more time to cure. So it seems that the screws are stripped on the inside, so I don't think I'm going to be able to remove those. So I might just paint over them and then just go very carefully with the gilding wax to finish them up. So just to show you what the paint looks like. So I did uh, the first coat. I'm going to let this dry completely. <laughs> the top is still not ready. So I'm going to let that cure some more. And while that's uh, uh, drying, because I'm gonna be using the paintbrush again, I'm going to put it in a Ziploc bag. And put a little elastic around it. That way it's not going to dry out on me, but I don't have to wash it and then use a different brush because the, uh, it would be too wet. But just a little trick and tip. So while I was waiting for the piece to dry, I was kind of looking at the, the top of it and I'm kind of liking the wood look. But this is very damaged, as you can see. It has tons of damage on it. So I'm going to give it a... a a little bit more sanding um, still using a hand sander and then I'm gonna apply this old masters gel stain in Spanish oak and this is supposed to be able to go over top of the existing stain already so you don't actually have to strip it and then apply the stain but because this has so many scratches I just want to buff those out with the sander so that is what I'm gonna do now and you want to go in the direction of the wood grain. So 
So while that's drying, I'm going to uh, give a second light coat to the bottom part. There are just a couple areas that need some retouching. So now I'm going to start staining the top and I'm using a rag to do so. And again in the direction of the stain. So I'm going to let that dry. So now that the piece had some time to dry, I'm going to apply the clear gloss the lacquer on the chalk painted part area. And I'm using a sponge brush to do so. So for the gilding wax I am doing the little well I'm gonna do more stuff but I just wanted to show you with the little knobs and here is the wax and I'm just going to squirt a little bit on the paper just a little touch and I'm just using a tough bristle brush to pick up some on and then I'm just going to brush it on and there so just to kind of show you the difference. Give me a reason to get out of bed. I need a minute to think, or maybe two. Cause yesterday I lost control. Now I'm going to move on to the furniture. While it's still drying, I'm going to work on the, the knobs. It's going to be okay, no matter come what may. I'm going to set things straight tomorrow. I let my worries fade, let them sweep away. There'll be another day tomorrow. Just to show you a little close-up, I think that looks really, really nice. Mm, So I'm going to go a little closer just so you can see. I'm going into little crevices just to accent them out. Drop it, please. So why not I got a flatter brush. So I want to add a little bit onto that little circle right there, just to accent it out. I'm 
add a sealer for the top. So for the top coat, I'm gonna use the General Finishes water-based top coat. No particular reason other than I had it on hand. and let me tell you I am absolutely in love with this piece and the way it turned out I'm pleased that I left the top with the stain and the gilding wax I just love it and I I was extremely impressed how easy it was to use the gilding wax I was a little bit scared to use it it was my first time but I love the way it turned out have gotten this piece um, from a friend she phoned me up and said she was getting rid of it so then if I wanted it she knew I like to upcycle furniture and things like that so I took it and um, let me tell you this piece is heavy it is solid wood um, it did have however some dings on top some scratches some discoloration and whatnot this video is also part of a challenge called uh, make it new challenge and it is hosted by DIY crafts with Anna um, and um, Be thrifty Jesse from be thrifty So make sure you check out both of their channels as well as the playlist that will be linked down below So the first thing that I will be doing is um, Sanding the top down now. I'm not looking to get it to the raw wood but I want to send out some of some of the major imperfections. Some imperfections are okay, but these were more like it looked like somebody put something wet and left it there, so it uh, kind of lost its color and so stuff like that. I just wanted to buff that out, sand it out. I am using a hand sander, and um, to be quite honest with you, I just found a disc sanding disc um, in a garage I can um, link it down below which number it was but I can't quite remember right offhand um, it was just whatever I had on hand just because I wasn't like I said I wasn't looking for something perfect because I wanted it to look rustic so I wanted some some spots to be darker and some spots to be lighter so but I am using my hand sander to do that. And I'm just sanding the top and the little um, trim around the top. Not the, what is the skirt, but just the trim. Once I was done, I um, wiped it down with just some vinegar and water just to dust it off and clean it off. And then I um, started with, once it was dry, I ended up staining it with this old man's stain. I will link it down below. I, it is in Spanish oak and I love the stains. Now it is a gel stain, so, and you're not, you don't need to uh, strip the table before you apply the stain. It's not necessary or sand it down. You can go right over top of it as well. I have several videos where I just went straight on top. I can, um, I will just link my, my furniture makeover playlist in the description box so that way you can see all the different ways that I refinish furniture. And I am using a brush to apply the stain and then I'm just using an old rag to rub it in. And you want to go in the direction of the wood grain. So once it, it was um, 
uh, the first coat went on. I waited a little, little bit before I applied the second coat. I did only two coats. Then I moved on to painting and I am using any Sloan original or it used to be called Old White and just a brush from Benjamin Moore that's a cottage, I think it's called Cottage Country. It is their um, chalk paint brush and if I find it, I will link it down below. If not, I will link um, all the brushes that I have from Amazon that I like using as well uh, from my Amazon store. So um, I painted this, um, the base and uh, I think it's called the apron of the table with two coats of this paint. So once it was all finished, painted and dry, I ended up taking the same sandpaper and just sanding out areas that you want to look uh, to look distressed. I did that for the skirt, uh, the apron, and for the bottom and the legs. For the bottom, I am using the Rust-Oleum Glossy Chalk Finish uh, and I put this all over where the I applied the chalk paint. For the top, on top of the stain, I'm using this water-based uh, sealer. I will link it down below and a foam brush to apply it. I put down two coats of this and you want to let it dry in between. And you also want to make sure that the stain is completely dry 
so several hours or 24 hours before you apply it. So here it is. I think it turned out absolutely beautiful. I love the contrast between the dark and the light. Um, I think it's going to be a great addition for anybody who wishes to have a farmhouse looking table. Um, if um, Make sure you go head on over to the playlist and the hostesses channels to check them out once you finish watching my video. And if you're stopping by my channel for the very first time, I would love it if you press the subscribe button and the notification bell for my future uploads. I think this um, upcycling, uh, this table was great. The table was zero dollars and I gave it a whole new life. I'll be working on this desk vanity. I will be making it over. If you follow along, you know this one was in my uh, master bedroom. I had gotten a new one and this one needed some updates. It was looking a little rough around the edges. I had gotten this off of Facebook Marketplace and uh, used it as my vanity and there were a couple things on there that I needed to sand down. It was dirty, but it was like oily dirty from all the makeup and stuff like that. So I wanted to upcycle it again and um, uh, maybe put it out for sale since I already had another, another one in my room. So I had gotten this, it came with a dresser. I have the original makeover already on my channel. I will link it at the end for you to check it out. Both the little dresser that I came with and this uh, desk. And now you can see how I make it over again and maybe resell it. So I had removed all the hardware first and then I'm going to give it a good wipe down, a take off as much grease and things that I can. Um, some of it I could not, it was just on there. I think it was more stained than greasy. And then I took a little, just a hand block sander and just sanded down that little, it, it looked like water damage, but it actually wasn't. I'm not quite sure. I think it was just scratches in the paint. So I took them off just so they don't show up when I paint over it. I will be painting this piece of furniture with any Sloan Athenian black, which is their black black paint. They also have a graphite, which is more uh, kind of lighter uh, black, but this one is a deep black. And I'm going to start off with the drawers, and um, and then I'm going to move on to the piece of the the rest of it. I would also like to mention that this video is part of a Philippine Friday challenge hosted by Jamie from Border Bananas and Border Bananas DIY. I will have Jamie's channels linked down below as well as the playlist. So make sure you head on over to that playlist and her channels to check them out. And the playlist will be full of the time. We'll have tons of flipping um, ideas. So make sure you check it out after you're done watching my video. So here is the piece after first coat. Um, as you can see, I'm going to need to apply another coat on here. Um, it was just some of the white was just showing through and I figured that is exactly what I was going to need to do. And I also need to pe uh, paint that piece. Uh, while uh, the second coat was drying, because I didn't want to bore you with me painting it with the second coat, I ended up... Um, Guild, uh, adding some gilding gold gilding wax, which is any Sloan as well, onto all the hardware. And I'm always also going to be adding it to those little accent pieces that were removed from the um, from the drawers. But before you do that, since the gilding wax has to be the last thing you apply to your furniture, uh, I am just adding a clear coat, a uh, clear lacquer coat. This is to protect the paint and the piece um, on it. And then once that had a little bit of time to dry, well, I, 
you want it to dry completely, I proceeded with adding the wax onto the edges where you can see that there is wax, uh, there is the gold already. The, this one was a lot more gold that I was adding than the dull gold that was already on there. So while that, while the clear coat was drying on there, I uh, added, started adding clear coat to all the drawers. The uh, body of the furniture wasn't quite dry yet, so I wanted to um, get kind of get things done that I could. So uh, while the drawers were drying, I added the wax to the side of this, um, and I wanted to get in here as close as possible to show you how this looks. I think it uh, almost gave it a new life. Um, I liked this gold a little bit better than the gold that was already on there. Now I just have the top of the furniture left to add the uh, protective coat. I already did the body of it. And then once that was completely dried, I did wipe some of it off from the gold edge that was on there. And then once it was almost dried, I went ahead and uh, added the gilding wax to the sides of the, the where the gold is showing. Just the same idea as the other one, just to uh, kind of give it some more life. The last part before I put the piece back together was to do the legs and this little accent piece that was at the bottom of this desk and I really liked uh, to uh, accentuate this uh, this um, little decor piece here and so by adding the gold it really made it pop out and then I also did the two legs here and then I also did the little just a little part on the bottom of the other two legs but uh, I did videotape it it's just with the angle it did not really show very well and then I put the whole piece back together and I am so pleased with the way this piece turned out this was not a very uh, solid piece of furniture it was more of the cheaper kind of furniture but I think with this upgrade the paint and the gilding wax really elevated the piece and made it look very high end Next piece was truly someone's tra uh, trash and became my treasure. My friend was getting rid of it. She was actually going to throw it out, um, put it on a curb, and I drove by and I said, hey, you're getting rid of that table, and I took it. So <laughs> I love this table. It is um, super heavy duty. Uh, I don't think uh, if I went to the store and bought um, a table that's this heavy, would I would be paying a lot of money for it but I really love this table um, so I ended up completely removing the stain from the top of it and doing a wash paint wash of Paris gray on top of it I had every intention to do a stain but then when I went to buy paint the guy talked me out of it and told me to use the chalk paint so I ended up buying it and doing what he said to do and I this has to be one of my favorite techniques um, on refinishing the table top because it's almost like staining it so I did a whitewash I did a wash I don't know why I keep it calling whitewash a wash of Paris gray and then once it dried I applied black wax on it and I just covered the whole area with black wax and then I wiped it off um, I, like I said, I absolutely love the way this table table turned out. <laughs> uh, it was funny because my friend ended up actually uh, asking me if she can buy it back from me because it turned out so nice. Um, I can't um, explain how how much I love the way the top looks. It is 
um, and I love the way it looks in my family room as well. I just recently, like last week, refinished two side tables that I had bought um, in a very, very similar finish. Because it was different wood, it always ends up looking a little different um, depending on what type of wood it is, but um, I did use the same technique to finish it. The bottom I uh, painted with old white and I made it look very uh, rustic, meaning I purposely left some areas of the old paint, old stain, uh, show through a little bit. Just I think it just makes it uh, look more um, farmhouse rustic, I guess, would be the right word for it. I'm not quite sure. Or distressed, or because you can distress it by sanding, or you can distress it by um, not doing a full coverage. You just have to make sure that it doesn't look like you forgot to add paint, that it actually looks like it's distressed. And then I fin finish all my furniture, which I did not mention before, with clear wax. And I love this clear wax, it does protect it quite a bit. I use this table, like I said, in my family room. It is where my family hangs out. It is where daycare kids hang out in the morning and at the end of the night. And there's often toys being put on it or snack being eaten off of. So um, it, the wax truly makes it durable. So here it is. Find it inspiring. The number one furniture makeover project on my channel, which is also number one video with views and likes and comments, is the sideboard that I have picked up. Oh, if I can't, it was either 50 or 75 dollars. I cannot remember exactly how much I paid for it. So this one needed a lot of work. It was quite a bit damaged and there was a lot of stuff on it. So I use mineral spirits or well. well Warsaw to clean stuff off of it just to get get it completely cleaned so for this one I went back to Paris gray since I had a leftover from the coffee table and I uh, painted the whole um, piece one I think it was one uh, only one coat like I said you'd have to go back to the video to get exact instructions how I did it but I'm pretty sure it was one one coat because I do uh, now I do a whitewash on it <laughs> because I keep saying whitewash but for the top I just did the Paris gray and then I added the black wax so you can now see the difference between sanding completely down and using Paris gray and white wax or and then just doing a complete solid Paris gray and black wax just so you see what how what the different different look it gives I love this top I love that the original color is kind of going through showing through a little bit and then the black wax and then the Paris gray I just love the combination on top so like I mentioned I make a wash with a white um, old white and uh, water and all I really do is I do like one part uh, paint and two parts water if I find that it's still too thick I add more water it really it depends on the look that you're trying to achieve so and I just um, dipped the rag in and I washed washed the furniture with it I did this on all the doors, drawers, and the top there. Also, what I did next once this paint has dried is um, I applied clear wax on the little accents because I wanted to um, apply the antiquing wax on those pieces. But what um, the white, the clear wax does, it uh, if you do it first before you do antiquing wax what it does it um it allows you to erase as much as you want off if you want to take it completely off you can or if you you just take off as much as you want whereas if you just go directly with antiquing wax it will some of it you won't be able to remove so it almost acts like as an eraser and then i followed up with clear wax everywhere 
uh, once I was done with antiquing wax on the accent pieces I ended up following up with clear wax just to seal the whole piece so here it is just so I can show you the little accenting that was done by the dark wax on the little accent pieces I have also replaced the knobs I have ordered these knobs on Amazon and I just think they gave it gave the piece a little bit of glam uh, I love the way this piece turned out I did not keep it I ended up selling it because it was too big for the area that I was planning on using it I had thrifted this item from a local antique barn for $75 it is an absolutely stunning piece um, I um, I had a hard time putting it in a truck with my friend and then it was even harder bringing it into the house it's quite heavy but um, and beautiful there are a couple imperfections on it which I'm sure the chalk paint will take care of I will be using Chateau gray chalk paint from Annie Sloan and I will also going to be using the clear glaze from Annie Sloan not the wax uh, but for the inside I will be using beyond paint um, it's the primer um, sealer and the paint all in one I use this on my cabinets I previously used it on that large uh, window that I upcycled and I just like it because it's pretty much um, you paint it and you're done you don't have to primer it you don't have to seal it after it's all taken care of in that paint the so I painted the inside just to brighten it up but I only painted the back wall of it I did not paint the sides because you really cannot see the sides from the window and I just wanted it brighter on the inside and I think it's gonna look great when you put but uh, certain colors on a shelf, they will pop out more being against the white background. This did take uh, two coats and I did allow it completely to dry between the coats. I did this as a first step because I wanted um, it to dry while I work on the outside piece because I knew that most likely the outside will only need one coat of chalk paint. So I took off all the hardware and once all the hardware was off I uh, taped up the uh, little window as well as some areas that I wasn't planning on um, painting I taped those as well. Originally, this was kind of evolving as I was working on it. Originally, I was going to paint the whole piece, uh, but then I decided that I was going to leave certain areas unpainted and in its original form. So I started off at the top so that way I can uh, lean up against the piece without uh, uh, worrying that I'm going to get some paint on top of me. I am 5 foot 10, so I was able to reach this, but... Um, I could see someone else needing a chair to reach it. So I went with a, f a fairly solid coverage on uh, the outside pieces, but then these accent middle pieces, I just used very little paint and almost a dry brushed it, kind of creating an ombre effect in a metal. I really, really like the way this looks. And then I did the exact same thing on the other side and then also on the middle piece, uh, on the bottom as well. So the way that works is you're almost, it's almost Almost like drag brushing the paint on and just um, going um, a little bit heavier to the middle but on the sides not as heavy but overall not as heavy with the paint and a little tip always have a little wet rag on hand if you get the chalk paint somewhere where you don't want it while it's still wet it's just wipes off and that is exactly what I did here because this is the point where I decided that I'm not going to paint the top of the bottom piece. I think leaving that in its original form is going to make it look really nice. I also decided not to paint the legs. And then I took that white rag and I just, a oh, wet rag, and I just cleaned off the hardware from the paint. And then whatever paint I had on the brush, 
I added to the piece. And another way that you can create the same effect is to have a wet rag and just wash the paint in by rubbing it around in circular motion. That is what I'm doing right here. Either way can give you the same effect. I did go over with a dryer brush there as well um, just to add a little bit more paint. Um, this I realized as I was painting that these accent little pieces were actually three of them were all broken. I, only one was in its full form so I just cut the one that was in its full form to the half like the uh, so it matches all the other three instead of trying to figure out how to match the three to the one that was f full because I don't think I could do that so or and I really like the accent piece so I did not want it to remove it So once that was all finished, I went in and um, painted uh, the inside again. And I did use a little brush just to get to all the crevices um, and all the little uh, angles and yeah, all the little crevices. So I cleaned off the paint but I also went because the paint wasn't dry yet and instead of waiting for it to dry and sanding it I just rubbed off um, a little bit of paint in a couple areas where you would think would be natural dings like scratches I just rubbed off that just creating it more of a rustic look. Then I removed the painter's tape and let the piece fully dry before I applied the clear coat. I also took another clean rag and just cleaned off the piece that I did not paint just to make sure that it's all nice and clean and there is no uh, dried up chalk paint. And like I mentioned before, the paint, the clear, the Lacquer that I'm using is the clear um, lacquer from Annie Sloan in matte. So here it is all finished. I think it turned out absolutely fabulous. I loved the two tones. I loved the dark shelves inside of it against the white. I think once um, it's all nicely decorated, it's going to look really beautiful in pretty much any space. And my assistant decided to finally wake up. So I hope you had enjoyed this makeover. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're stopping by for the first time. And thank you so much for all of you returning. And I will see you all in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.